So, hello and welcome back to episode 42 of the Champ the podcast for the season. And went down such a treat, Ronan Groom, the day-by-day videos at the Cheltenham Festival that we've decided to do it for Aintree and we'll be doing it for Punchestown as well. So, cannot wait. This is day one of Aintree, uh, episode 42, as I said, proudly in association with our partners, Boyle Sports, our betting partner, Syndicates.Racing, Gorn Park Racecourse, the premier racecourse in the southeast of Ireland, and of course, KCNR Radio Station in Kilkenny and Cardo. So, lots to look forward to seven races and we're encouraging the viewers down below get your selections in for day one of the entry uh, festival and of course so uh, we can't wait to uh, dissect the grand national 4 p.m the feature uh, race of the entry festival which uh, is coming up of course on saturday afternoon but Ronald groom good to see you that's a strong cup of tea i hope because we have a big car to get stuck into day one of entry Believe it or not, Basil, it's actually a couple of lamps sip. Um, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, but uh, very much looking forward to getting stuck into the action. My my spirits naturally lifted by seeing your face again. And uh, a cracking first day, I must say, uh, four grade ones, obviously. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're getting Willie over there and Gordon over there and the best of the British. And it looks a bit more competitive even, or at least as competitive as Cheltenham, but without all the anticipation and hype so uh, very much looking forward to entry I think it's a meeting uh, this year it could be a fine renewal Absolutely and we're going to kick off Roland race one on the card is the uh, Close Brothers Manifesto Novices Chase I thought an interesting stat on this particular race is we've only had one winning favourite in the last 10 years and obviously the two market principles the three market principles are backing up uh, off the back of efforts at the Cheltenham Festival what do you make of uh, the opening race of the Entry Festival? Uh, It was a right little battle, wasn't it, between the two of them and the Turners? A a really good race. The two of them kind of dominated from the front. Uh, It was nip and tuck up the straight, and and, and Ginny's destiny, fair play to him, really, really had the the grey donning pull out all the stops. Um, And it's easy to see them kind of doing the same thing again here at Entry. The two of them might go off in front and take each other on again. Um, I wonder is there a bit of juice in the price of Villa Tetomp? I went back to watch the article again. Uh, like just never got going, did he? Jumping wise, it was so poor. One uh, error in particular down the back. He he, he like he would have we wouldn't have been surprised if he pulled up after that. He he like jumped on top of the fence and 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 got shuffled backwards. And you're thinking right, that's that. I think he did tremendously well actually to get up for third. He looked like he was staying on. He looked like for one second he might even get second. Get to found to 50, but understandably his run kind of petered out then. He had to make up so much ground from the back. Paul Townend riding him for only the second time ever in his career. That's the type of horse he's been. He's always been like a second string in these big grade ones, but he's getting the full treatment here, the full number one plus something treatment. I think he could is a bit of value. Don't forget, like, you know, Grey Donning was a Brown Advisory horse up until the last minute. So they see him as a three mile horse, really. And he probably outstayed Ginny's Destiny more than anything up the hill. And Ginny's Destiny, all his form is basically at Cheltenham. He's a Cheltenham horse. So will he be able to transfer that to entry? I'm not sure. He might be a level below. Mm. And Illite Tom, I think, can jump a bit better here. You're getting the Willie Mullins, Paul Town, and in here at a 7 2 in a five horse race. I think that's a, that's a nice way in. Might start chasing down the uh, UK Trainers Championship as well. Willie Mullins, of course. So we might discuss that later on in the episode, Roland. Uh, he is uh, three of the first five in the betting for the Grand National. I think he might need to take that out if he's uh, to win such a pot. Uh, but in terms of this race, I thought it was keep it quite simple. I thought the best form coming into the race is actually the British Novice Chase form. That Grey Dawning and uh, Ginny's Destiny were, you know, very, very good. The two of them in the Turners. And uh, in my view, it should be 3 0, Roland. Uh, to uh, to Grey Dawning over Ginny's Destiny, uh, but for the mistake, obviously, back in the at the end of January. And I just think, um, you know, they've met twice over fences, they've met once over hurdles. Great, you know, Ginny's Destiny was well put in his place by Ginny's Destiny in great a company over hurdles. Um, heavier ground, I think, is probably going to suit uh, Grey Dawning a little bit more. And you mentioned Ginny's Destiny, is most of his form is uh, at Cheltenham over fences. I think all of his runs have come at Cheltenham. So, um, and I actually thought he, he, he had an easier time than, than maybe you're thinking, Roland, uh, early on in the race. I thought he did his own way in front in the turners. thought he had an easy lead. I didn't think there was much excuses. On ratings, uh, Grey Downing is the one to beat. I just think Ilete Tomp 
probably lacks the scope for offence. Um, interest in talking to Danny Mullins just prior uh, to the uh, uh, to the Cheltenham Festival. Ilete Tomp, like, I mean, all his best form is actually on nicer ground. I know he won on heavy ground in France before he joined Willie Mullins. Um, but I just wonder, will he get bogged down in a race like this? I'd say stepping up and trip will help him. But for me, back over hurdles next year. And, you know, give him a trip as well. See, see maybe could he develop into something like a stairs horse because um, I don't think this is his game. I think Gray Dawning, um, if he's to be a Gold Cup contender next year, Ronald Groom, I think he needs to be putting these away. And I'd say he's probably the most progressive. Five to six, he goes into the team sheet for myself. Um yeah, two twenty. Obviously, is the the juvenile grade one. Sergino four to five. Are we with or against Nicky Henderson at the entry festival on the groom? God, uh, I, I, I'm 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 going to sit on the fence for now, Basil. I'm not going to play this race. Going to let a few of them run first and uh, and see what happens. Um, it's it's funny, isn't it? That the first real test of it is this 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 hot pot, this Sergino, the the, the Nicky Henderson kind of predicament that people are facing. He's four to five here, but I just couldn't touch that. I wouldn't touch it anyway, to be honest. It's not my type of price. But if you were that type of inclined punter to, to get involved at odds on, I mean, you just got to let these horses run first to see what way they are. Um, Look, on no, all known form, the way he won at Cheltenham, like, remember, he was quicker than Lossie Mount up the straight that day. Uh, really impressive. Um, But I just couldn't touch him. I, I, I'm willing to, this is just a no bet race for me on, on that account. I just, not knowing what the favourite's going to do, it shapes the whole race. Obviously, Car- Cargazi brings in the triumph hurdle form uh, second there. Probably got outstayed by Majbert, really. Uh, looked like the likely winner going to the last and probably just got outstayed in the ground. Um, she she should run well. Nuremberg Ring was my fancy for the triumph, ended up going off six to one. If I was punting anything in the race, it'd be him, but it's a no bet race still. Cargis, uh, but look, she was going to be the bet for me. I think she is the solid one in here. Uh, looking at the Irish form, obviously, they've come well clear. She's come five lengths clear, um, in the triumph hurdle of uh, Salver. Um, for me, I think, um, if you actually look at the you know. Early on in the race, she didn't settle at all. I mean, she's she's absolutely tanked for 90% of the race. And I thought coming down to the last, she was going to get away with it. Um, did she go, maybe, did, did Danny go for a little bit, maybe too soon? She made a mistake at the last. I thought it was a massive performance considering she's pulled four cl- lengths clear um, of the uh, the third salver. I just, I just think the mistake at the last didn't help her cause. And I think you could really mark up the performance. Um, you know, she's won on heavy ground in France. She seems to act on softer ground. Um, I think uh, as we were uh, gearing up to record this evening, we were due another three or four mils of rain. So it's going to be certainly on the heavier side of soft. Um, I think the ground will suit her. And it'll just be interesting to see what tactics uh, Paul Townend uses uh, on Cargis. You know, does he let her on? Uh, we've seen, uh, I think Willie Mullins has won this twice. Um, in the last seven years in both were Phillies, Apple's Jade when he trained her, uh, and obviously uh, Zenta last year. So I'm going to go with Cargis. I think three to one is more than fair. The unknowns around Sergino uh, and the Nicky Henderson stable form on this occasion. I thought Cargis was clear of the rest. So I'm willing to take my chance at three to one. Um, 2.55 is uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the bowl chase, of course, over the three miles and a furlong. And seven to four and drifting Jerry Kalam, a career best runner groom in the Gold Cup. I think it's fair to say, and he has his conditions. Would you be with or do you oppose? Uh, I'm going to be against them. Like the Gold Cup uh, placers have a bad record in this race since the turn of the, the century, um, and he did have a bit of a grueler there, didn't he, in the Gold Cup? So the prices, I just want to be against them. Again, the same in place as Shishkin, I suppose, with Nicky Henderson. Obviously, won here last year, and that kind of set up to him as a, a possible Gold Cup horse. But obviously, things haven't gone to plan since. Really, just a couple of uh, obviously dodgy efforts. Where one obviously refusing at Kempton, and then uh, you know, or at Ascot even, and then and the, the 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 weird unseat last time. Um, and you don't know what the yard is going to do. So I wouldn't touch the top two in the market. Corbett's Cross is a novice. Um, you know, I love to see him coming in here, but is he not very short here at 130? I love the play, as I say. And it kind of leads me to have a crack at one of these. And the one I'm going to take a chance on is Brave Man's Game. The first time cheek pieces. I remember Paul Nichols putting the first time cheek pieces on Clan Des Oboe here and he bolted up. Um, like, it, it, there's no doubt he's been a level below what he what he did last year, Brave Man's Game. But like, if you, if you say that, he's still nearly won a King George. 
and uh, ran perfectly respectable with fifth in a gold cup. Um, it's not bad form at all. I think the ground probably just got too heavy for him at at, at uh, Cheltenham, and I'd say he just doesn't stay the gold cup trip. To be honest, to be honest, I've actually had a few quid on him. Believe it or not, for the Ryanair last next year at thirty three to one, I think they'll come back down a trip. They'll do a bit of a protector at on it. Paul Nichols might think. You know, this is not a Gold Cup horse. He's not going to stay the trip, but we could win a Ryanair coming back down a trip where his jumping is so good. So that kind of that, that kind of sentiment or that kind of reading into him is what I'm looking at here. Uh, Nichols is obviously a great record in this race as well. I think this track will suit him better, given he's a Kempton horse, really. Obviously won the King George the year before last as well. So 10 to 1, double figure price. I thought that was the, the best value in the race. Yeah, I know he won at entry last year, Jerry Kalam, but it would be against him. I mean, it was a career best effort last time on heavy ground in a Gold Cup in a race of that, you know, nature. Um, I'm happy to take him on as well, Rona, especially at that sort of price. I'm not surprised he's drifting. Um, and I just worry in a race like this against better quality animals uh, and a sharper track like entry. Is that really what he wants uh, off the back of such a hard race in, in, in the Gold Cup? Shishkin, obviously coming here a fresh horse. Um, nine times he's raced on soft ground. He's won six of them. But I'm convinced Rona Groom is a better horse on nicer ground. And obviously we have the Henderson. Um, we have the Nicky Henderson stable. Uh, doubts as well until we, you know we see Nicky Henderson's horses going to win at this le- win should I say at this level um, I'm willing to steer steer clear of him um, more so due to the ground factor here um, looking at the likes of obviously the pace angle in the race a high senior brave man's game gentleman uh, gentleman's game like there's plenty of pace in this race so I just wonder what do you do with Corbett's cross I'm willing to chance him in here Rona Groom at 100 to 30 I know on ratings what is he with Shishkin? Has he sixteen pounds uh, to find? But he's only a novice. Emmett Mullins, brave campaigning, you know, aggressive campaigning, which I like. If he's going to be a Gold Cup horse, I think he has to be in the mix. He has to be mixing it with these. And I thought what was very, very interesting at Cheltenham, Rona Groom. My big worry with him, you know, if he jumped right at Cheltenham in the National Hunt Chase, no issues with stamina, no issues with class. He was easily, obviously, the classiest horse in the race. Uh, but his jumping, it just all came together in the jumping stakes. I know they were probably going, they were only really hacking, weren't they, to the second last and really just took off. He put 10, 10 or so, 10 plus lengths between himself and Embassy Gardens off the back of the last. I think he was, you know, three or four lengths coming down to the last in front of Embassy Gardens. But they were all in a line uh, coming to the second last. He's shown his class there. Um, I'd expected him certainly to be mixing it with these. And at 100 to 30, I think there's doubts about a couple of them. Um, and I think the race could be run to suit him. So Corbett's cross for me. I know he raced three miles, six furlongs on heavy ground at Cheltenham. And I won a race. I thought he was one of the most impressive winners of the week. Um, is there an argument to be said that he's barely had a race or barely had a blow? Jaunt, the, yeah, possibly. They just tend to tend to just jaunt around the the national hunt chase, and that's what he did. He he fairly bolted up now, didn't he? Uh, up the running, like he just quickened right away from. Them. You could see entry suiting him as well. I just thought the price was a tiny bit short, Basil, uh, for what he's done. Like he he does have to improve a, a, a stone and more here on official ratings if if the top two run to their level. And uh, you, yeah, fair enough. You're getting the progressive kind of angle towards him. He's only seven year old. Um, there's more to come from him, obviously, but it might just be a bit of a step too far for me. The price just wasn't worth it. Um, uh, I'd give a quick, quick mention to a high senior as well. Obviously, the, he's a great record here at age three. Just disappointed me now a couple of times for the first time this season. I just thought he could have ran a little bit better in the Ryanair. And uh, after kind of a, a kind of a, a prep run, I suppose, at Ascot. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he ran another big race here, but... Um, yeah, I was tying with him a bit, but just just a little bit dis- too disappointed for me in the Reiner. Yeah, just a- another thing in Shishkin's favour. I think uh, when well, he's bidding to be the third back to back winner uh, of this particular race uh, this decade, so you know, repeat repeat winners do happen in a race like this. But we're on to um, the uh, fourth of the Grade Ones, uh, the entry hurdle over two miles and a half a furlong. And I suppose I'll jump in here, Ronan Groom, because look, Imperial Pass season has not gone to plan. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him over a fence next year. But I wonder, is this something of an afterthought, really, with, with, with Impere Pass? Um, Bob Ollinger, I couldn't for the life of me uh, back him at the price he is. He's 7-4 to four at the moment. I could never back Bob Ollinger at, at that sort of price at the moment. And um, look, you, 
it's interesting. You have the eight runners in here, Ronan, um, which obviously gives you the three places. And if they all stay in uh, off the back of a career best effort last time for a trainer, um, and I know I'm contradicting myself here slightly uh, with Nikki Henderson, but the price is, is 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 very good. I think about about Lucia. I mean, she's ten to one. Um, she was one of the the few Nikki Henderson horses that ran um, a career best. Uh, ran well, you know, even finished the race at the Cheltenham Festival. She's finished third. Uh, that was on heavy ground. And I think Nikki admitted after the race, Roland, I mean, she would off a massive price in the champion hurdle. She was only beaten a handful of lengths by state, man. Um, and, you know, she was ridden to run well. And I think she can do, she's ridden to, ridden to finish a race, really. And I think she can do the same up and trip here. I think that'd be that little bit easier for her. Um, Nikki has won four of the last six renewals of the race. She'd be able to settle, travel and jump. And I actually think more so than ground, it's attracting with Lucia. And I, even though she was, or she did put up a career best effort at Cheltenham in the champion hurdle, stepping up and trip on a flatter track, I think is important to her. Um, and I was quite impressed with how she finished out a race in the champion hurdle. So um, you must remember she's only six years of age, 10 to one. That's for me, Ronald Groom, if the eight stay in, she's my each way better today because I think there's question marks over the front two in the market. Bob Ollinger at, at seven to four, that's a stink price. And Imperia Pass, for me, he has to prove it in open company. Jeez, Basil, I am with you all the way. Uh, believe it or not, this is my best bet of the day, Lucia, uh, 10 to one. I just think it's the wrong price. Like they're going to the first two. You kind of mentioned it there in passing, but uh, and Perry Pass, like yeah, brilliant in the in the Ballymore last season, but just hasn't been at that level this year. Even even taking that he's in the, into open company, just been a bit disappointing. And this has been an off after talk to come here. Uh, and Bob Ollinger as well. I shame I just couldn't trust him. Like I, I come around to this kind of view that, that two and a half miles over fences or hurdles. If you're a specialist over that sort of trip, you're basically just not that good. You're not good enough for two miles or three miles. Like if you look at the Rel Keel hurdle that he won, which would be often one of the best two and a half mile hurdles of the season. Like it's littered with horses who just basically aren't good enough to do three miles or two miles. Like Marie's Rock, McFabulous, Somerville Boy, Stormy Ireland. They all won the Rel Keel. So Bob Ollinger going and looking impressive there is one thing, but coming back or, or doing it against a, a, a couple of grade one horses here, um, I just I just want to take him on at the price. Obviously, yeah, Lucia brings in kind of two mile grade one form through the champion hurdle. Now she does have to improve a bit on, on the figures, of course, but like that was a huge run. She's coming off two career bests now, uh, having won the what was the old Ladbroke hurdle at, at Ascot and, and stepped forward again. Then at Cheltenham, the way she finished off a race was really good, as you say. And she's always promised plenty, hasn't she? Like Nikki Henderson, obviously, needless to say, the 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 stable wasn't in great form then, but she defied that. And it, it and if Nikki had a couple of winners early on the card, or Sergino went in, like you know, you're you're you, that's obviously going to bolster her her uh, the optimism behind her. So I just think she's the wrong price, ten to one double figures. I think that's a nice way into the race. Langer Dan is interesting as well. Obviously, the with the handbrake left off now, uh, <laughs> interesting to see what he does at Grade One level. But the way for me to race is just as I said, take on the top two. I think they're at those prices. You're, you're six to four, seven to four. So if you couple them together, it's long odds on that one of them wins. And I just, I just don't think that's right. Uh, Lucia would be the one I would, I would have a go at here. Yeah, and even in spite of stable form, I mean, she's been so consistent this year, uh, Ronan. You know, she's had, um, you know, if you look at her form, she's had four starts this season and she's not been out of the money in any of them. So um, I just think there's, there's, there's certainly lots to like. I mean, she was second in grade of company here last year, wasn't beaten far by in the pocket, off the back of a disappointing run at Cheltenham. She's arguably been late. Arguably, should I say, coming here in even better form this year at 10 to 1. Yeah, that'll do for me each way uh, in a race like that. Right, Ronald Groom, we're going to come on to uh, the Fox Hunters uh, and the bumper. Of course, I know you're absolutely uh, chomping at the bit to get involved in the uh, the Mayor's bumper, uh, given how, uh, how much you look races of that nature. But we are going to go for a quick ad break. And when we come back, we're going to be looking ahead to the Fox Hunters. Patrick Mullins. 
syndicate start racing 50 euro off your first share today and say yes offers are well this uh, promotion still applies so if you obviously pick your horse on the website plenty of opportunities to get involved in particular now for the uh, the flat season and we hope to have jack uh, Cantillon on the show uh, building up to uh, punchestown uh, to discuss uh, options and uh, the catalogue, of course, ahead of uh, what uh, will, well, of course, uh, the flat season really ramping up now. With plenty of opportunities to get involved with syndicate start racing and uh, yeah, look at uh, those uh, famous uh, faces, of course, in, in the training ranks: Willie Mullins, Gordon Elliott, Gavin Cromwell, of course, and uh, not forgetting as well the likes of Joseph O'Brien and uh, plenty of. Uh, well, flat trainers as well to uh, get involved with and uh, yeah cabaret princess that was recommended of course by jack you can see there if you obviously select your horse on the website syndicate start racing and type champ all caps into uh the uh, the discount uh, bar there hit apply and you'll get uh, 50 euro off your first share today with syndicates dot racing so we look forward to having jack on the show very very soon but we move on with our build-up to, uh, of course, uh, Entry Festival Day Number 1, the Hunter's Chase Class 2 event. Uh, not a major strong opinion, Ron. I think you're more or less the same in this uh, 405 at Entry. But one thing I would say is it was quite strong on its on the line heading to Cheltenham. And when he puts it all together, I mean, I think concentration is the thing when it's on the line. Uh, when he concentrates, and when, you know, when he puts his best foot forward, um, he's never far away. Um I thought it was an incredible performance in his prep run for Cheltenham at Nace. And I just wonder, would in a race like this, over the national fences, on this type of ground, you know, he's gone well on heavy ground in the past. Could it just spark him up that little bit more and say, you know, could we see the likes of it? It's on the line running in an entry national perhaps one day. I think he's a good horse. Officially, he's rated 140. Um, as I said, he's so, so consistent. Didn't win at the Cheltenham Festival, but I think he could get his day here. I think stepping back, obviously, to two miles and five furlongs is going to suit him as well. Yeah, uh, I, I can't re- offer very, very much to what you're saying there, Basil. I, I, I agree with you. He looks like the, 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 the right favourite from what I'm seeing. Animix is interesting, obviously, winning the last day. Uh, funny how these horses end up... Uh, Adam Mix obviously was uh, one 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 time the big supreme hope, wasn't he? And ended up being in the in the fox hunter uh, around entry. So interesting how it gets on. It's not a race I'm going to bore uh, viewers with because I haven't done it properly at all, and it won't be a race I'm playing in. But uh, look, looking forward to seeing them going over the national fences for the first time this week. Heavy ground officially at the moment, and I don't think that's going to change between now and tomorrow as we are scheduled a little bit more rain. It could dry out uh, heading towards uh, the National on Saturday, uh, but for the moment, I think you're going to see heavy ground in the description, uh, so make sure your runner is proven on that. But I've got to give it on the line one more chance. I think uh, it could be a class above these. Right, uh, next race on the car, runner groom, is a race that I'm sure you have uh, won buried away at a bigger sort of a price. Uh, 440 at entry. It is the uh, Red Rum Handicap Chase this way. Uh, this time, should I say, on the uh, the Mildway course, over the two miles, 15 runners. Anything stick out for you? Yeah. yeah um, it's, 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 it's interesting, this race. Like, if you go down the years, the last five winners, none of them come from, Chel- none of them ran at Cheltenham. Um, so that's kind of an interesting trend to take. Now, obviously, the sample size is quite small, like for horses that were running the Grand Annual and come back here. But you would have at least two to three every year, and 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 it's interesting that you know they come here and and they haven't none of them have kind of finished in the top three or four. Um, so the top three in the market all ran in the Grand Annual. So if you wanted to take that play, you could probably take them on. Um, they're all obviously deserving of their chance at the top of the market. They all uh ran well. Sam Ra is probably a bit more darker. He's uh, you know was six there, beaten, well beaten, but he made a bad mistake coming down the hill. Uh, he got a couple of pounds down in the weights. Um, he ran well at Aintree last season. I can see why he's favourite. But I'm kind of taking the fresh angle a bit, and I'm going to take a chance on an Irish horse here, Whiskey Welt, for uh, Terence O'Brien and John Shinnick. Uh, like he was a really good winner the last day out at um, Gorham Park. That's a good good piece of form there. The, the William Mullins horse in third, I think, was was useful enough for could have been on a decent mark and he had him well held heavy ground soft ground he won over hurdles the time before that he's gone up a bit in the way so he said he's fresh comes here progressing nicely uh, and i just had a few question marks basil now to be honest about the rest of them heltonham was one i kind of liked but this is him coming down in trip and i didn't see an obvious strong pace angle i think he he he's a horse that's often held up out the back and comes home strongly over two and a half miles coming back to two miles here with no pace angle you could see him 
outpaced. Tom Public was another one on my shortlist, but I think he, the ground might just do for him. Dancing on my own, obviously, he's got a good record in this race. But again, the ground uh, for him to carry top weight here might just be a bit too much. Uh, I wouldn't put anyone off taking one swing on one like Irish Blaze or Black Jerry kind of uh, big prices, but for a win purposes, I like this whiskey well. I think he'll go on the ground, he's progressing nicely, and uh, uh, he'll do for me coming in here fresher than the the top three in the market. Yeah, if you look this, you look at the second that day at Goran Park as well, Mount Frisco run a groom that obviously ran very very well at the uh, Easter uh, festival as well uh, for John Ryan Mount Frisco. I think uh, John Ryan was very disappointed speaking to him down in Goran Park that uh, he was beaten on that occasion. He's a nice horse going forward. There's definitely a pot or two in him, but a whiskey well, yeah, snap. I mean, you mentioned the ground uh, and obviously the those uh, backing up off the back of uh, the Grand Annual at the Cheltenham Festival. I mean, the ground is the big thing here, really. Uh, whiskey Welt. Seems to absolutely relish the mud. I mean, four of his five career wins uh, have come on heavy and soft ground. And you know, he likes to be prominent as well. I think um, he was always in this comfort zone at Goan Park in the Shamrock Chase when he won. I thought he won snug enough now, in truth. And you know, obviously the uh, the second has come on and has come out, should I say, and run well since at Fairy House, as we mentioned. And, and they've come clear of the third. I thought it was a good performance. He was well backed on the day into five to two. John Shinnick has been on board on his last two runs. We know the horse well. Obviously won at Nace set on his penultimate run. He's on a hat-trick bid. Um, so I thought there was lots to like. He's a nice racing weight as well. Ten stone seven rolling. And I thought if you looked at it, look at the way he jumped at, um, at Gorn Park in particular. I thought he shifts out to his left as well. So that could suit him uh, going left-handed here in a race like this. He's got his ground, as I mentioned, and he's been well back six to one. I'm absolutely in agreement with you on Whiskey Welt. Um, I suppose looking at the, the horses that ran in the Grand Annual, Senwa, he's disappointed, hasn't he? Um, look, he, he's been dropped a pound, I think, but a handicapper from 151, 152, so two pounds in total. Um, I mean, there's every chance he could still be on a very attractive mark. I think there's a big day in Pat Doro when that is. I'm not entirely sure. The cheap pieces have been left on. Uh, he seemed to jump a lot better and travel a lot smoother with the cheap pieces in the Grand Annual. I think unexpected party off 146, the handicapper might have him. And I think you could be right as well about Helton. I mean, just looking at those at bigger prices, uh, there's nothing jumping off the page at me. So Whiskey Welt, I think he's a solid one, Roland. And yeah, that's uh, the way we're going to side. Now, I'll ask you, first of all, do you have a pick for the bumper or shall I fire on? You, you, you take full blast at her. Full blast at the bumper again. Not an absolutely uh, massive fancy run and groom, but one that is on a little bit of a recovery mission. But I think she could be talented. It's Mongebello in the double green, and uh, for Stuart Crawford, JJ Slevin is going to be on board. Nine to one. Look, I thought that might just underestimate uh, her chances. Uh, she finished second behind only by night in a listed bumper at Navin. Uh, a couple of starts uh, back before absolutely bolting up on Stephen's Day. She was my banker of uh, Stephen's Day. Um, 13 Lent winner. The form is working, working out, I suppose, on both counts. Uh, with only by night, obviously, progressing. Um, came out in one of a hurdle since. And obviously, uh, the form of the uh, the second at Down Royal uh, has come out in one since. The name escapes me for Pat Fahey. Uh, Sporting Glory, I think, is the name of the the, the runner who's come out and, uh, and run well since. So, uh, I think the form is working out well. Obviously, she disappointed at Leperstown in the Grade 2 bumper uh, for mayors. I don't think things went her way on that occasion. She was keen early. She ended up getting you know taken on for the lead. Um, and I just wonder, could you forgive her that run in Grade 2 company? I thought she was up to it going in uh, to uh, the Dublin Racing Festival. And, you know, she was she was backed accordingly. I mean, I wasn't the only one who thought it. She was well backed on, the, on that occasion. So I thought, on this type of ground... This race, to me, doesn't look as strong as the race in Leperstown. Baby Kate uh, was impressive, obviously, at Cheltenham. She's been kept for this. She's the obvious danger. But Mongebello at 9-1. I'm willing to take a swing each way, Roland. I think uh, this way could, could could go the way of the uh, uh, the uh, the green team, if you like. And uh, the double green, obviously, of Simon Muneer and Isaac Swade. Mongebello 9-1 to one by picking the last. Best bet, Roland Groom, or best bets of day one of the entry festival are for you. Go, I will go with Lucia Basil. Uh, just think the price is uh, is too big there at all. Uh, she'll be my best bet. Um, and I will nominate Illa Tomp as uh, next best in the first. 
Well, I'm going to go with uh, for my best bet of the day. I think at the prices at the moment, um, I like Whiskey Welt, a Shamrock Chase winner, had to land the hat trick. Um, and in terms of an each way bet, yeah, Rona Groom, I'm going to side with uh, obviously. Um, Lucia, I think you've said it each way, 10 to 1, getting the three places because if the eight runners at the moment, um, that's uh, going to absolutely agree with you on that one. So, a bit of agreement today, Rona Groom, but uh, we're encouraging the uh, the viewers, of course, to get their selections down below uh, to enter uh, the next prize draw on the Champ the League channel. Day one selections, get it in the comments down below and make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. Yeah, so that is our day one selections for the entry festival, Rona Groom. We'll be back uh, same time tomorrow uh, to preview day two. And I cannot wait to delve into the national, of course, 4 p.m. on Saturday. Put it in your diary, of course. The feature, the main event of the evening, as they would say. Rona Groom, we'll see you tomorrow.